Now, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not going to pretend to be a lawyer, and none of this is legal advice. But I want to discuss contracts because it is a question that comes up so frequently in the groups that I'm in and the mentoring sessions that I'm a part of. So the interesting thing about contracts is a lot of people think you only need them as soon as you're established in business and taking people's money. And yes, you do need a contract in all those situations, but personally, I think you always need a contract. I think that you still need a contract when you're in your portfolio building stage and no money is being exchanged simply for the release of liability to make sure that you have them sign the model release and just so that all the expectations are set beforehand. So when do you need a contract? I say all the time, every single time you're interacting with a client or a model, every single time that you have a photo shoot, whether that is with another company and it's a commercial client, or whether that's a portrait session with a private party, or you're the official show photographer at a horse show, or you're covering a horse show as media, I think that contracts are essential at all times. It protects all parties involved, and that's the really big thing about contracts that I want to emphasize today is that it's just as much protecting you and your business as it is protecting the other party on the other side. So let's get started. Today I just want to go through the key elements of what your photography contract should include. So I think, and, and I'm going to organize this in the way that my own personal contract is um, created, the same outline, the same flow, and I start by addressing who. So naming all the parties involved in this agreement. And for me, my party is the entity I have created, Kirsty Marie Photography LLC. So Kirsty Jones, the person, signs the contract as the bottom, as the authorized signatory for the entity that is entering this agreement, and the entity is my LLC. Then my photography business is who I am. Now the person on the other side, it might be them personally if it's a portrait client, it might be um, a magazine or media company if it's media, it might be another entity. Um, if it is any type of commercial work or show photography work, you might be entering an agreement with another entity, some corporation of some sort. But at the very beginning, I name all the parties involved so that it's very explicit who is entering this agreement with each other. The next, I consider like the what, and that's where I describe all of the services. So who's responsible for what and when is that gonna take place? Again, it's just as much to protect myself and my company as it is the other person joining this agreement. So I include the hours of coverage that will be involved, any products or print credits that is included in this package, um, what rights to the images are included. Uh, it's also a good place to possibly say which rights are not included if you feel that that needs to be specific right there. Um, but this is essentially where I say what is being exchanged here. What are my obligations and when? What are the due dates? How, how soon will you have them? And then the next section of that is what we are exchanging this for. So even in um, my model call contracts, I just say the fees are zero dollars. But in all of my other contracts where there is money being exchanged for these photography services, um, I just am very explicit about what amounts are due when. So typically there's a retainer due and the contract states that that's not refundable and it lists the reason why and then there will be a balance due and it needs to say when is that balance due i like to include all the ways um that i accept payment so i take cash and check and i have several different payment processors between you know stripe and square um to process credit and debit cards so i say if you're paying by check here's my name to make it out to here's the address to send it to if you are paying with a card, I will send you an online invoice. I make it very explicit in that fees section about how they are going to pay me, not just how much and when, but the method of payment as well that are acceptable for my company. Um, so I include all the instructions in there. It's also a good place to put late penalties if your studio enforces late penalties, um, what is going to happen there. and. Personally, um, I withhold product if final payments have not been made. So it's, you know, whatever you um, in your company 
have set up studio policy wise is a good spot to put that there. The next section that I go into is all the rest of my studio policies. So this is a really good place if you have some experience and some photo shoots under your belt um, and you have had clients with certain requests or who have pushed back on things or who have been difficult here or there. Um, these are places where I've experienced any pain points along the way in my business. This is where I add all of my studio policies what happens if you don't show up on time for your session. So it includes all sorts of things about timeliness, about cancellations, about rescheduling, about what happens if you no show and you don't show up. Um, this is where I tuck in every single detail of um, what could possibly happen and how we're going to handle that. The next part that I go through is copyright. Photography is, um, protected under the law in the United States where by default the creator of the image owns the copyright. So I think it would be a very rare situation where you would need to give up that copyright, um, but I still explicitly state that I retain the copyright to all of the images um, using the U.S. code and law in my contract, and then I outline what is permitted use of the images, so all the ways that they are able to use these pictures. For example, a lot of my portrait clients can use all the images for personal use. So I give a print release where they can print the images. I give a personal use release so they can post them on their social media um, and, different, and different things like that. And then I also list what is prohibited. So in that example, commercial use would be prohibited and they cannot sell those images to a company or give those images to a company. So I really go into detail about what personal use is, what is allowed, and what it does not allow what they do not have the rights to do. For my commercial clients, um, it's important to outline all the things that they can do and all the ways that they can use these images. And then I also outline the ways that they cannot. So they will have commercial use for their specific entity that entered into this contract, but again, they can't give or sell the pictures to any other companies unless that's explicitly stated um, within the contract. So I go through the fact that I retain the copyright and then lay out all of the releases and the permissions of what they can do and what they cannot do. And then the model release is the next part of that where I now can use the likeness of my client, use their face, use their name um, in my marketing material and I'll outline all the different ways that I might be using those images so that I have permission to do so. And if my client is, or the subject of the photo is under 18, then obviously you have to be 18 or older to enter this agreement, so their guardian would be signing for them. The next section I think is the most important because I'm an equine photographer and horses are very, very dangerous. So the next section of my contract goes through liability and the assumption of risk. So it's releasing me from liability and it is the client assuming risk for the activities that are about to happen. Now I list very generic language that every, any and every business should have about a liability release, but then I list extremely specific language to horses. And the reason that I do that is because horses um, inherently have more risk than any other type of session. A session that includes a horse is gonna be riskier um, and more dangerous than say a family session or an engagement session where there are no animals involved. There are many, many things that can go wrong, um, including the horse getting hurt, not just the people. I could get hurt, the handlers could get hurt, the horse could get loose, the horse could hurt, the horse could damage property, other people could damage property. Um, the list goes on and on. So I'm very, very specific about the assumption of risk when it comes to equines and horses being in our session. At the end of my contract, it goes into all the typical legal stuff. So merger, amendments, severability, notices, um, notices meaning what are acceptable forms of any changes or communications. Are we emailing? Are we texting? Is a phone call acceptable? Does it have to be a written form of communication? Um, competency and governing law. So all just like really standard legal jargon um, that's at the very end of my contract. Now. If you want a done for you solution written by 
a lawyer who is also a horse lover, my friend Christina Scalera has created an equine photography template that is everything my business needs. So if you want to go to kmplearn.com slash contracts, that is an excellent done-for-you solution. Another really great option is to take all these ideas and the different components of what your contract needs to include and go to a local small business lawyer who would be able to help you draft this or you could draft this and they could revise it and make sure that you are fully covered in all your business's endeavors. So check Christina's out at kmplearn.com forward slash contracts. It gets you a 20% off coupon um, for anybody who goes through that link and uses my promo code. And I wish you guys happy shooting.